What happens when you stop talking to a dismissive avoidant ex? This is what we're going to cover today in this video. Perhaps you've tried to make things easy with him and or her and you're still in touch uh, with them, but you get those mixed signals, you don't see anything sort of progressing. Sometimes you feel like actually it's making things worse, but at the same time, if you cut any form of communication, you know that they're gonna leave because you've read online, you've seen online that avoidant tend to move on quickly than other people. So what happens? You're stuck. If you stay in touch with them, they're overwhelmed. If you uh, go no contact, they're gonna leave you and forget you. I'll explain everything after the jingle. <laughs> I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. Before I start, I want to remind you that I put together a quiz for you to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex. The link is in the description. You can also like and subscribe the channel because I always forget to tell you this and it does help me a lot. Uh, if you like this video, if you find that this content helped you and uh, you understood things and it, in a way, my goal is for you to get unstuck and to get practical tools to get back with your ex or to heal from a difficult breakup especially with avoidant and I give you, uh, I share with you a secret. <laughs> I used to be a dismissive avoidant. Um, so what is an avoidant um, or dismissive avoidant? It's defined by a, a self, the ability to self-soothe. So uh, it takes its roots in childhood when kids um, ha don't necessarily have their parents able to, uh, you know, when they are distressed or when they are crying, they can't have the, the emotional closeness from their parents giving them a hug or soothing them, okay? So they develop this ability to self-soothe because the par their parents are aware, they're busy, or they're not available for them, okay? And so they prefer distance to intimacy and they have the deep fear of commitment because committing, because developing deep emotional things is not something they used to do and then it makes them uncomfortable. I can talk hours and hours about being a dismissive avoidant because I used to be one. I went through therapy and now I'm more secure. I know sometimes I have a tendency to, <laughs> it sort of comes back, but because of my therapy, I understand the triggers. I understand when I start to become a bit uh, avoidant and now I'm sort of uh, more secure with, uh, with my wife and people around me because I think it's also a behavior that you get with, uh, with friendships or colleagues as well. Now, I'm also a strong believer that being more secure push your partner to be more secure as a result of that. So it's also something you have to be mindful is how you can help your avoidant ex to become a little bit more secure. Okay. If you have any questions about dismissive avoidant and want to get in touch with me, there's a link as well to book free discovery call. This way you can ask me a question if your ex is avoidant and you're freaking out and you don't know what to do. It doesn't make any sense. Your ex is a French dude. <laughs> it doesn't uh, reply to any message or have uh, send you some um, mixed message and you want to make sense of them. Give me a call. <laughs> I'll be happy to help you. Um, so why avoidant can be attractive? Not only because they have amazing sweater, but it's also because they have this uh, strong independence, right? And we usually need to fight for them because they like to keep their distance, right? Um, you have to understand, and I use this an, uh, example often, is like, I like to be in the same house as my wife, but not necessarily in the same room. <laughs> I like my space. I, am, I like my own room or my own space. Um, and you might take this as I'm not good enough, right? They reject me or it's not necessarily rejection, but you feel like, I need to fight for them, okay? We, it's a form of emotional scarcity, right? And we want what we can't have, right? And when we can't have those connections, we, you know, crave even more for them. That's the dynamic. And that's the problem with the anxious avoidance cycle. Sometimes when we date avoidant people, we can create a form of anxiety that happens. If you're, by nature, anxious attachment style, this will be even worse because you, all their behavior would trigger your anxious attachment style. And those two fears, the, the fear, um, so avoidance is the fear of commitment, anxious is the fear of uh, abandonment. And they keep on clashing with each other. As soon as the avoidant will take some distance, the anxious will feel like, oh my God, he's going to leave me, he's going to dump me, he's going to abandon me. Therefore, I need to connect, I need to be there. I need to show up at their place. 
And when you do that, the owner is like, oh, whoa, it's so overwhelming. Now she's in my, she's in my front door or he's calling me, spamming me. I get overwhelmed and it's not what I want. So you need to break this vicious cycle, obviously. And when you stop fighting, this is what happens. They don't necessarily don't want to see you anymore and don't want to disappear. They just want some distance. And it's very hard to understand because if you're anxious attachment style, if you're secure attachment style, it's not exactly the way you function. It's not exactly how you see the world. And that's in a way very difficult to understand that if your ex wants some distance, it doesn't mean that they don't want you. They just don't, they just want distance. Okay, and how long, uh, how far, it depends on the dynamic, it depends on the, the relationship, whether you're in, uh, in a relationship right now, whether you broke up, how long, all these kind of things. And they come back when, I guess that's the thing you want to know, they come back when they feel you don't depend on them. Avoidant, when they realize that someone needs them, depends on them, when they feel like your happiness depends on whatever they do, um, they get overwhelmed, they, they freak out, okay? So you have to show them you have your own life. You do your own thing, right? This is how you attract, this is how you can get back with an avoidant ex. I give you a client case, a client story. A client of mine, they were long distance, um, dating long distance and she came to see him but when she was seeing him they were 24 7 together and it was overwhelming for him and so they split up and she decided to move in to the same city but instead of telling him like i'm moving in to the same city i want to live with you uh, i want to do things with you what she did is like listening to my tips <laughs> she moved into the same city and we sort of discussed really if, if that's really what she wants and that's the last part, I think it's really about what you want. She moved in the same city and she didn't tell him. She moved into the same city. She lived her life, uh, found a flat, uh, started to meet new friends. She had her own life and out of the blue, they started to get in touch and being like, okay, what are you up to? And she told him, oh yeah, by the way, I moved to this place. And it sent such a strong message to him, i.e. I don't, she doesn't depend on me. She has her own life. We can have our two spaces and meet and find ways to connect together, right? And to be in a relationship dynamic that works for both of us. So when you have those mixed signals from your ex, understand that it's an ongoing dilemma. They want to be with you, but they are scared. You know, my job as a relationship counselor specializes in helping people get back with the ex is to fight the fear, is to create what I call the safe space where you ex will feel like, okay, the feelings I have for her are stronger than my fear. Usually people break up because their fear are higher than their feelings. And so they are scared because they think they will make you suffer. You know, they realize that when you, they took some distance, you overreact, you were so stressed that they didn't give you any news for five days, for example. They are scared of to be committed. What does that mean? You know, uh, talking about kids, family, living together. It's overwhelming. You know, we've been together for six months and you're talking about like moving together, having kids. It's overwhelming. It's hard for me. The sense that they're going to lose their freedom. Maybe they had to, I don't know, <laughs> go to uh, family dinners. They hated. They had to, um, uh, they couldn't really see their friends. Uh, they had to do things with you all the time. And that potentially was scary for them. So it's really analyzing those few things because the idea is to define and let them understand that you can redefine a new relationship on better terms. So that's what, for example, I'm doing with my clients and it can take a bit of time. It's to really show your ex that actually it doesn't have to be our old relationship. It could be a new one on different terms. I understand that you need some distance. I understand that sometimes um, you know, I'm too clingy. So I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to start being more secure and we can find, redefine a new relationship where we'll both be happy. When we won't be scared of commitment, when I won't be scared of being abandoned because I know actually why you act like this. So match, one tip is to really match your pace to theirs because really sometimes we, we tend to send more message 
uh, than needed, we tend to um, expect more than they are able to do. And so if you match their pace, you're sure that you don't sort of, uh, <laughs> I call it, um, do some emotional trespassing. It's really like they have their friends and if you get into their territory, they will start to fight, they will start to push back. Okay, so it's really let them come to you, be more of a listener than, uh, than, than speaker, let them explain their situation, let them uh, explain their needs. Of course, it's very hard to crack their, um, their shell, but it's, uh, it's really about being non-judgmental non and, and understanding what they want. Also, and very important, is to understand your limits. I, my clients, so <laughs> if you, I'm on your side, basically. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. I don't care about your ex. And so it's very important for you to understand whether getting back with a person who can't provide some of your needs, is it really what you want? Okay, so it's really important. Sometimes uh, people realize that I can't be with someone avoidant. I have a deep need to speak with my spouse, with my partner every day for an hour. That's, my, that's a deep emotional need that I have. Of course, you can work at being more secure. You can go through therapy, see a counselor like, my, like myself to understand why you have those needs. And I, I sort of work out how to, you know, sort of solutions to, uh, you know, to not to, 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 to feel that, that need to, to connect with your partner 24 seven. But at the end of the day, it's very important for you to understand your limits. What are the things you can't compromise on? What are the things you don't want, you won't accept? And based on that, you can decide whether you should get back with an avoidant ex. Don't get me wrong, I'm an avoidant, so avoidant people are amazing, but don't get me wrong, the idea is to really understand, okay, is it really what I want? If you could choose, it's always better to date someone who's secure. So build that security, because the idea is to work on yourself, and who knows what's going to happen, and that will, of course, attract them. That will also change the dynamic, and they will reconsider things. If you do the right things, if you have any questions, sorry, I struggle at the end of the video. If you have any question, if you like the video, like, if you have any question, give me a call and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.